Nice five, Daniel. Sorry, say that again. It said nice five. I've been oh, watching the fives. Oh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. How's our it, How's our little How's our friend doing? Which one? <laughs> the 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 bird. Oh, the bird. They seem to be pretty good. Good. They seem to we're be pretty good. good. Yep. They had Daniel. They had. I think they had six show up at that rescue because of that cold snap. Wow. A lot of juveniles had trouble with that cold snap. Now, I had trouble with it too. I wish I'd have known I could get checked in there because I might have needed to. Good morning, board. Everybody ready to go? Okay, uh, we're missing Rodney. We'll start the meeting. It's 10 01. Uh, first up, I'll open the meeting and I need approval of the agenda as presented, unless there's changes to be stated. In a motion and support. Motion by Kowalski, supported by Snell. Uh, all in favor to keep it saying aye, we we'll the sign. Motion, the agenda's been approved. Uh, public comment, first round of public comment. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on down to item five, our minutes from last month. Uh, unless there's changes, I need a motion to approve. In support. We've got approval of the minutes by Snell. Who is our support? Thank you, Mr. Plesky. Uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Or give the sign. Motion approved. Our minutes are approved. Next up, we have appointments. Okay, uh, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. We have one commissioner to be appointed. Current member is James E. Shotwell Jr. He has applied. Uh, do we have any motions or nominations from the floor? We have just one meeting. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Plusky. I, I think, it, are you looking for a nomination for yes, sir. Steve Shotwell? Yes, I sir. I will move that. Thank you. And I'll, uh, Ray will support that. So all in favor indicate by saying aye. Passes unanimously. Hang on, board. Hello. Rodney. We have Rodney checking in. Rodney. Check again. Michelle sent it out. All right. Or call. All right. Uh, IT, Rodney needs a connect sent to his computer. Rodney Walls. Got it. Thank you. Okay, uh, did we vote on chat? Well, I think we did or not. I had to take that call. Thank you, board. Okay, we have two public members. We'll take these one at a time. 
Uh, the first public member is Ted Hillary. Ted Hillary has applied. Um, so has AJ Crown over and so has Mike Way. So we have three applications for two public positions. What's your pleasure, Gordon? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll nominate Ted Hillary for the first open seat. Okay. You have a second for Ted Hillary. Thank you, Ray. Okay, all in favor of Ted Hillary. Do the sign. Move Ted Hillary to the full board. Second to public seat is AJ Crownover. AJ Crownover is reapplied. Mike Way has reapplied or has applied for the position. I'd like to nominate A.J. Crownover. Okay, we have A.J. Crownover nominated. Any other nominations from the floor? I'll nominate Mike Way. Uh, Madam Clerk, we call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Commissioner Walls. Way. Mr. Plesky. Brown over. Mr. Mahoney. Good morning, crown over. Mr. Snell. Crown over. Committee Chair Duckham. Uh, Mike White. I have three for crown over, two for way. Okay. Uh, Crown over, Mr. Crown over will be uh, submitted to the full committee. Mike Way is my pal, but Crown over is the incumbent. Uh, economic development, here we have. He didn't like the guy, I guess. Yeah. We have uh, Martha Furstino, is a current member. I hope I said that right. Uh, she has also applied, and that's the only applicant we have for her position. We need a second. Should we have a motion from the floor? Thank you. All in favor of, uh, was that a motion, Rodney, from the floor? Who would you like to submit? Martha has reapplied. So I guess by default, she goes to the full board. Okay, uh, the other position is vacant due to a resignation. We have no application, so we'll put that up there again for next month. Uh, we have the city of Jackson, LDFA, VRA. It's a county representative uh, that's vacant and we have no applicant. So we'll take that next month too, we'll re-advertise. Uh, next month, April, May, we have public Safety and transport, or no, we have employee retirement system board, three positions, and Upper Grand River watershed for next month. Okay. Mr. Next Mr. Up. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. before you go on, could I qualify that for the retirement board? Um, yes, sir. I need to make you aware that those are elected positions by the unions, they're not appointed by your committee, sir. I apologize. I don't know why they're appearing on here other than the commissioner's seat. I don't know why they put the non-union or the general ask me uh, here listed, but the commissioner position um, would be the one that's coming forward next month, sir. Okay. And that'll be in our advertisement for next month. Yeah. Made clear. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, Mr. Chair. Next up, we have the conservation district. Um, welcome. How are we doing? Hi, thank you. Good morning, Lori. Good morning. Um, so just a, I'm going to go just a quick few things that we've done since the last time we presented in September. Um, our biggest fundraiser of the year right now is our tree sale. Uh, 2021 is underway. Uh, only a couple more weeks to ordering and the numbers are um, so much higher than last year. Um, so that's going really well. Um, 
uh, scrap tire collections for 2020 had to go later into the season because of the pandemic. So we finished the last of that in October. Uh, we ended up collecting almost 14,000 tires, uh, scrap tires in Jackson County. Uh, the household hazardous waste collection, uh, the last one was at the end of September. Uh, in 2019, we collected over 50,000 pounds of hazardous waste uh, with about 600 people participating. 2020 was different. We had uh, four different events um, with just over 200 people participating, but we still collected um, almost 40,000 pounds of hazardous waste. In our September collection alone, we collected uh, over 16,000 pounds just in that one collection. So it was uh, very successful this year. Uh, our, we are all undergoing um, HAZWOPER training, which is ha hazardous uh, waste operations and um, emergency response training right now. It's the refresher course. Um, all of our uh, employees are, are doing that right now. Our last one is this coming uh, Thursday. And our annual banquet this year was canceled. So we did have to appoint um, Jill Yaxheimer, who is our current board chairman. We did appoint her for another year and then she'll run for a three-year term next year. Uh, we, we were able to hold all our Adopt-A-Stream programs um, the fall, uh, winter and spring last year. We just had our winter stonefly hunt uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had 13 volunteers um, show up. Uh, plus staff and board. So that was a huge success. Um, we still have the same um, five grants that we've had for the past couple of years, our CTI grant, hunter access program, the MEEP grant, invasive species, and then that scrap tire grant uh, for 2020. 2021 or 2021, they were all renewed. Um, right now, the scrap tire grant, uh, we are committing or submitting the application by April 1st. Uh, normally, we've, we'd already had it all planned out right now, but the state had no idea if that money would be available, and they just, just opened up that funding. So we, will, we are applying for that. We've already heard from several uh, townships that want to participate, and um, we will still do our countywide collection probably in July or August. Uh, we also submitted um, for another grant through um, Michigan Department of Natural Resources for $85,300 uh, to focus on Japanese stilt grass, European frog, met red swamp crayfish, and the mile a minute weed, and the tree of heaven, which is a host species for the Asian longhorn beetle. So uh, that we'll find out within the next couple months uh, whether or not we receive that grant to, to keep our invasive species coordinator. Um, and we are still working on, um, as I talked about at the last meeting, the household hazardous waste collection. Um, once that uh, incinerator money went away, uh, we don't want the pro program to go away. So we're doing um, our best right now to secure funding um, from other uh, municipalities. Um, I've had, I'm in talks right now with townships. I'm speaking at a township meeting this, this Wednesday and I've been asked to speak at a couple more. Um, hopefully I'll be able to speak at the, um, the supervisor meeting to talk to everybody, um, but a lot of townships are uh, showing support to keep that uh, program going. Um, I'm trying to get in as a permanent line item uh, to help support uh, the hazardous waste and hopefully when we get, when we get county money back um, to support that, then their money will be used to expand that program and to help with other uh, programs throughout the district. Also, we're uh, talking and submitting a uh, Consumers Energy Foundation application as well to help support that uh, for at least this year to, to keep that program going. Um, let's see, I've also spoke with the city too. I think their environmental group is um, interested in possibly helping us with that as well. Um, so just a couple um, things about our grants. So this year, our, so our CTI soil engineer, um, she made uh, 40 site visits um, and provided technical assistance uh, to about 25 farms across eight different counties. Um, the work that she did resulted in approximately $234,000 of proposed federal funding and 207,000 of that $234,000 of federal funding uh, were contracts approved in our county. Our invasive species coordinator uh, surveyed about 60 acres and 35 acres were treated um, we surveyed for European frog bit, the crayfish, Japanese knotweed. Uh, she did some seminars. Um, we did an oak, oak wilt project with private residents and the DNR on land next to the Waterloo Rec area. 
and um, we also have treatment equipment available for use by the public, such as uh, sprayers and um, injectors for uh, Japanese knotweed. Our MEEP technician verified 11 new farms um, and conducted 262 risk violations throughout Jackson County and provided $3,000 in cost share dollars to assist landowners with soil and water samples on their farms. And our district conservationist uh, did over 60 conservation practices were completed. This past year, um, we had 15 contracts for over $440,000. 3,600 acres were enrolled in the conservation stewardship program. There was 161 acre wetland restoration. Uh, eight properties signed up for the conservation reserve program to provide habitat for pollinators and ground nesting birds. And in total, these conservation programs uh, impact thousands of acres in our county and represent a federal investment to Jackson County of over $1.3 million. Some upcoming projects, we have our Adopt a Highway coming up, uh, three starting in the, from spring to fall. Uh, Project Red this year, the Rural Education Day is gonna be a, a virtual. Um, when I submitted my report to you a couple weeks ago, we had about 400 students uh, signed up. Now we have almost a thousand. It'll be virtual. We're basically do uh, all the farms are submitting a uh, video and we're putting compiling it all and giving it out to the teachers. Uh, Earth Day celebration in the park right now is scheduled for April 21st for, or 24th, excuse me, at Cascades or Sparks Park um, over in the area, like at the bottom of the sledding hill. Uh, native plant sale, I did doing pre-orders again this year and we'll be at the Jackson County Fair and we are fingers crossed that we're gonna have at least two events uh, for the hazardous waste collection. So that's it, I hope it wasn't too quick. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Question, Laurie. Uh, yes. What's the, what's the day to get on the uh, Earth Day? Earth Day would be April, April 24th. Thank you. Any other questions for Lori? Thank you, Lori, for a good report. Thank you, everybody. Okay, next up we have our uh, annual treasurer's report. Welcome, Karen. Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you. So um, I have sent out the year end report, the annual report for 2020. It was a 21 page comprehensive report. I sent that to all of you February 22nd. So hopefully you've had time to look at it, peruse it, digest it. And obviously if you have any comments, um, we can certainly discuss that. Um, do I have the ability to share a screen here? I believe so. IT should take care of that for you. Yep, I do see that. Hold on just a second. We can peruse through this uh, um, document. Um, I'm not going to do it in um, any um, specific format. Maybe I didn't do this correctly. Hold on just a sec. Am I doing something wrong, IT? You're good, Karen. It's showing. It is showing? Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So um, the first point that I would like to take a minute is on page five. Um, you can see we did a quick down and dirty, uh, kind of an executive summary there, pages two, three, four. Uh, but page five, I really took a, a minute to kind of talk about 2020, because as we all know, 2020 was very different. So there's some, um, I guess, some highlights of what um, our staff um, encountered um, outside of the norm, I would say, for 2020. So I wanted to take a, a minute and include that and highlight that. And then we can just peruse through. You've seen this document before. Um, not much has changed except obviously the numbers uh, that would highlight the uh, fiscal activity for 2020. Um, as always, I give you the output. So there's lots of statistics here, uh, good numbers. It may be relevant to you, may not, but it's important for us to report out. Um, of interesting note, we had a lot of things happen in our investment pool and uh, investment portfolio last year. Um, as a result of the pandemic, all of our long-term holdings were called. So our investment portfolio looks a lot different at the end of 2020 than it, does, than it did at the beginning of 2020. 
no cause for concern. Uh, we have those monies held um, in liquid form. And I think that's the, uh, the mantra that I'm gonna continue with going forward through this fiscal year, keeping the money liquid. So you'll see big, big numbers, big dollars being held in Comerica Bank, which is our primary bank and then our Michigan class. Um, and that is offering the highest re rate of return interest rate, um, even more so than any of the short term. So I've parked those dollars there temporarily. And until we come out the other side, uh, hopefully, uh, I don't know when, I don't have a crystal ball, but um, we'll see, uh, look forward to uh, building and reladdering some investments long-term. Um, I'd like to think maybe even middle of this year look to do that, but uh, we'll wait and see. So the investment portfolio is definitely different than last year. So we talk about settlement numbers. That is um, every March 1st, the new batch of taxes that come to the county treasurer's office uh, that was not collected at the local unit. Here is our handy dandy timeline. It helps uh, visualize the law and the steps that are involved in the um, tax collection process. Talking about forfeiture numbers. And then of course, I always like to take uh, the big portion of our discussion um, and my sharing of information on foreclosure and foreclosure prevention. Uh, page 13 talks about numbers of the different programs and um, the pro prevention efforts that we uh, and took, uh, took upon ourselves in 2020. So the most significant change on page 14 and the foreclosure process was because of uh, the governor's executive orders that actually moved uh, legislatively the tax foreclosure deadline from March 31st and it, she moved it several times with executive orders. Uh, and so the final date was June 29th of 2020 uh, is when we foreclosed uh, last year. So that was very different uh, than in years past. So um, what I'm most proud of is that even though all of this craziness was happening with the pandemic and obviously the impact um, on our taxpayers, as a result of that, um, our foreclosure prevention efforts were successful in that our numbers for total foreclosure went down again. Uh, we ended at 109. Um, and so on page 15, you'll see the breakdown and that graph. Um, I really like looking at that graph because it shows the downward trend of the foreclosures that are happening in Jackson County. This gives you a nice history from the beginning of the tax foreclosure, foreclosure process and ending with um, the totals that we had for last year. The graph or a table down below there does a nice job of breaking it out, uh, those numbers of the 109 uh, city parcels, township and village parcels, and then the county totals. You'll see that we've even broken down that further to include houses or structures and or vacant lots. So even though we foreclosed on 109 parcels, that does not mean that we foreclosed on 109 houses. So um, having that breakout to show you uh, how that all plays out is important, I believe. So if you wanted to know where the foreclosures happened, the, on page 16 is a map of the county and the numbers there reflect where we had the foreclosures. Um, and hopefully this is useful for you uh, when you go back uh, and, and do your work in your, um, in your areas and working with your constituents. I included this uh, next page here. It's very data heavy, um, but I wanted to, it's, it's a good visual that shows that um, where we end up, you know, we work with uh, people for 25 months during that tax collection process prior to foreclosing. And um, so 98% of the taxpayers that come to us delinquent end up paying their bill um, all the way up until that foreclosure deadline. And it's less than 2% of the people that come to us delinquent that we end up foreclosing on. And that graph on page 17 shows that. Um, again, it's pretty data heavy, um, and I could certainly explain it further if you need it, but really the most important thing is to show that that 1.19% 1 
is the total of what we ended up foreclosing on for that last tax cycle in tax years. Here's some state comparisons there, that table there on page 18. And I talked uh, briefly about property, personal property tax revenue and collection. Also our dog license program collection and licensing that did take a significant hit last year because as you know, our offices were closed for some time due to the pandemic. Um, and I think other people's attentions were focused elsewhere rather than, uh, than licensing their dogs. So we did see a dip in uh, the dog licenses that uh, we issued. On the next page, page 20 is the breakdown. And then lastly, passports. And that also took a significant hit because um, not only was it impacted by the fact that our offices were closed and we saw decreased um, in office contact with people, the state uh, Department of State stopped issuing passports. So there was a time last year, I think it began uh, mid-March, um, when most of us saw the beginning of the COVID pandemic, the State Department of State stopped issuing passports altogether. So uh, we weren't able to even process any passports and then send them on to the state for approval. So they opened that back up, um, gosh, towards the end of last year. So you'll see that that uh, number and revenue was impacted because of that. So that is my report, quick down and dirty, but I've got um, plenty of time if you have questions about that. I see Commissioner Pulaski. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chair. I recall, uh, Karen, at the end of the legislative session, there was a bill out there intended to address the delinquent tax revolving fund issue. And I, I admit my ignorance of the, the nature of that legislation. I suppose I would just ask your general comments on, on how things will go in that realm, which has been so difficult for us the past year or two. So that's a great question and I totally anticipated it. Um, and it's a very loaded question. So um, there was plenty of legislation that was happening throughout last year um, and county treasurers all throughout the state were working with lobbyists and legislators to um, craft language to implement how to uh, deal with, how to roll out, how to make changes to our existing laws for foreclosure as a result of the Raffaele um, Supreme Court decision. And I believe that's what you're referring to, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that came down, gosh, I think it was July of, I think last year, the year before maybe even, because we've been working on the legislative fix for that for quite some time, regardless. Uh, we were successful in crafting language, working with uh, legislators and lobbyists uh, um, and the treasurers. Um, it was a true collaborative effort. And at the very last hour of 2020, uh, it was probably the last week in December, two bills uh, with our language finally were uh, approved through uh, lightning session and then reached the governor's desk for signature. So. PA 255, Public Act 255 and Public Act 256 were the resulting uh, laws that came out of all of that work uh, to specifically address the Raffaele Supreme Court decision. So with regard to that 255 and 256 and the Raffaele decision, um, as the Supreme Court had uh, ruled, that was a prospective change, meaning that it only impacts this foreclosure cycle in 2021 moving forward. And what that specifically talks about is when we foreclose on properties March 31st of this year, 2021, um, there is now a form that is available and a process available for any persons or entities that we foreclose on to file a claim to retrieve or get reimbursed for any excess proceeds of the sale of that property. So we have the form now. It was released uh, by the... Um, 
Department of State, I think it was end of February, 226 of February. So we have the form now and the form is readily available. Um, it really starts the clock ticking after March 31st because any person that's been foreclosed on can then file a claim utilizing this form. And then we start the process for claimant uh, for the claimant for any and all excess proceeds, if there are any, at the tax foreclosure auctions. So, and again, it does only impact those tax foreclosures moving forward. It does not address any of the prior tax foreclosures. So I'll leave that um, where that is, and then I can certainly talk about where we are dealing with well, what happened before this? So I'll, I'll pause here and um, see if there's any questions with regard to that new process and new law. The questions on that board, Commissioner Mahoney? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, how you doing, Karen? Well, how are you? I'm doing well also. Good. Um, I just uh, wanted to ask again what the, what that public act number was. It was 255 and 256? That is correct, yes. Okay, 256 might be incorrect because I've got coming up Michigan Fireworks Safety Act PA 256 when I search it. Could it be a different number possibly? I don't believe so. Um, those were the two public acts that we were we were given from our lobbyists. So I can search for this after the meeting, but I'm pretty sure it's 255 and 256. Okay, thank you. I would appreciate that because the 255 is the commercial and I, I, I assume the other one would probably be the residential, um, but I'm not finding that. So if you could find that and maybe send that out to Mike to send uh, commissioners or send out to commissioners uh, to take a look at that. Absolutely. Um, I, I am curious if we are proactively telling people who are being foreclosed on that that form is available. And the law says that we have to do that. So yes, okay. to answer your question, all of our forms that we have um, that get sent out from our office includes new language that talks specifically about the fact that if they're a claimant, that there's a form that they need to fill out. And it says you may have an interest in um, acquiring your equity if you are foreclosed. So there is specific language that has impacted several of our forms um, as we are doing our notice process throughout the whole cycle. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate you. You're welcome. And I'll get that uh, those two laws out to you. Karen, if I may interrupt, this is Deborah. Yes, please. Um, I looked it up, it's um, MCL 211.78, M as in Mike. And it does come up if you go to the Michigan legislature website, you type in public act 255 and it does refer to that. So um, 255 and 256 do come up as that. And right. those are those are the, the public acts are 255 and 256 of 2020. Get the yes. correct right year. Yeah, you have to enter the year. Yeah. So, but the MCL for quicker reference is 211.78 Amazon Mike. Very good, thank you. Sorry, Deb, one more, one more time. If you go to the Michigan Legislature website, you can find it two ways. Either type in under um, MCL, MCL 211.78 Amazon Mike. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Great. So if there are no other questions, then I can talk about how um, we uh, will Karen? be handling. Karen? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Snell had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please. Go ahead, Ray. Thank you. Um, hi, Karen. How are you doing? Great. Hey, uh, I think Daniel covered most of it. I would be most uh, interested that that form be provided to anyone who has a foreclosure, um, not just that there is a reference to it, but it sounded like you're already on top of that, and I appreciate that. Um, I've never felt it was right for the taxing authority or the, uh, the authority that is foreclosing to uh, profit at uh, people's expense. 
usually uh, those on the lower income side. So I think this is, um, I like the Supreme Court uh, decision and I think this uh, new legislation addresses that. So thanks a lot, Karen. Absolutely. So with regard to any foreclosures prior to this year, um, I don't have a very good answer because there's still pending litigation that is, that is ongoing and no uh, determination, no form, no, um, you know, how many years back do we need to go? Uh, none of that can be decided or determined until after these pending litigation cases um, get resolved. Uh, for Jackson County, we have litigation pending. I believe it's the Fox case. And until that litigation, um, active litigation comes to some type of uh, resolution, we are in a holding pattern with regard to prior years. So uh, that's my best answer with how to handle those prior to this tax um, collection cycle. Now, are there any questions with regard to that? Karen, I have a question. Yes. And it's going back a step. This form uh, to file, does it have a number or a name? I can attend, I can send that as well now that the State, State Department of Treasury has it. They have it on their website, but the form is called Notice of Intention to Claim Interest in Foreclosure Sales Proceeds. The form it, number is 5743. And the date of issuance was 02-21. All righty, thank you very much. I probably just asked for form 53, 5743 and everybody yep. will know. And it is on the State Department of Treasury's website. Thank you. Okay, so um, the other only other good news that I wanted share with you is to update where our numbers are right now. We've got 24 days remaining in the month of March. Um, the good news is I have not heard of the foreclosure deadline changing or being modified or being pushed back this year as it did last year, um, but we could see changes to that. So um, as of right now, we're operating that March 31st it is and will be the deadline for collection of the 2019 taxes. And we have 399 parcels that still remain to uh, need to be paid in full prior to foreclosure. Um, that number may seem high, but it actually is much lower than uh, where we've been in years prior at the same time. So the news is good that we've been working with people. People are calling us and, and emailing us. Uh, we're granting hardships for those that have been impacted by the COVID pandemic and will continue to do so up until the end of March. Um, so our goal is to continue to get that number, total number of foreclosures. I'd like to see to get it under 100 if possible. it will be excellent. And that is all that I have to report unless there's other questions I may answer. Questions, Council Committee? Looks like we have no questions. Good report, Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, guys, have a nice day. You too. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item 5E, the facilities. Welcome, Rick. Good morning, Mr. Chair, commissioners. In front of you, we have a request to approve the pop-up lease agreement for 120 West Michigan Avenue, Suite 102 for the Nevermore decor store. Uh, as we know, entrepreneurship is so vital for our downtown area. And we started this process, gosh, Mike, how long has it been? Three years ago, five years ago, to start bringing in small businesses, extremely small businesses, at a reduced rate and allowing them to grow and thrive to the point where they move out and into another vacant space and we start the process all over again. Uh, I have to admit 2020 was tough. We lost our one tenant. It was just not sustainable for them to stay in business. 
we went out and advertised for potential tenants in both the Blazer and M Live, and we had this uh, company approach us, and they have a solid business plan, and we'd like to move it forward. Hey, my computer is down to 3% and it's charging. Okay, fine. Uh, any questions for Rick? We have a motion and support. Motion by Rodney, supported by Ray. All in favor indicate by saying aye. I'll give the sign. Pass this unanimously. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, we'll move on to the next item, be finance. Welcome, Cecilia. Lord, Good morning. Uh, hang on a minute, please. Uh, my computer is charging, but I'm losing percentages. So if I disappear, Vice Chair needs to take over. Um, go ahead, Cecilia. Okay. Uh, good morning. Um, so in front of you is January's financial statement. Um, our expense, expenses did come under budget, which is positive. And our revenues are pretty much where we would expect for January. So um, I, if there was any questions on January, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions, commissioners? Commissioner Pulaski. Thanks, Mr. Chair. We were talking with uh, Ray and I were talking with Cecilia this morning, and she said that, of course, January revenues are pretty poor, and uh, much of the county revenue comes in later in the year as uh, summer taxes get collected. So uh, that was uh, thanks, Cecilia, for spending time with us this morning. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Any further questions? Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, next item for finance is the uh, the carryover report for uh, capital budget from 20 to 21, from 20. Yes, so these are the balances that um, we had at 2020 and we're requesting that the capital budgets be moved over to 21. This is necessary that we do this, uh, finish up the projects. Um, exactly. They've been maybe. funded. We have any questions? Discussion? If not, I need a motion and support to uh, make the budget adjustment. Supported by Snell or move made by Snell. Who, who did anybody? Uh, uh, motion by Rodney. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Give the sign. Pass this unanimously. Thank you. Next up, we'll have uh, item H, parks, Little Wolf Lake playground equipment. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you, good morning. Okay, we're looking to uh, purchase some new playground equipment for Little Wolf Lake County Park. So this would replace the existing equipment that's there now. Uh, I attached some pictures of the existing equipment as well as the renderings for the new equipment ties to a public engagement session that we had in 2019. Uh, that's a priority that the group established uh, for the park there. This is included in our five-year plan and we would order this upon approval and install, install yet this spring. Question, discussion? Pretty clear cut. Okay, I need a motion and support to send us the full board. Motion by Snell, supported by Waltz. All in favor, indicate by saying aye or give the sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you, board. Uh, moving on, another uh, park action. Um, go ahead, Kyle. Okay, some more uh, for Little Wolf Lake here. This is uh, to apply for a Michigan Department of Natural Resources Trust Fund grant. Be seeking a resolution of support to support the project and to commit to the match. So be to acquire the property just to the north side of the swimming area adjacent to the county park property there. The 
landowner actually approached us about uh, about selling this uh, to the county. He'd like to see it go toward park expansion. Uh, so it'd be about an additional uh, 50 feet of lakeshore for the county park property there. It's not a huge piece of property, but the uh, the park itself is not huge either. So this would be, uh, relatively speaking, it'd be a nice addition uh, to the park itself. There's two uh, existing structures on, on this property. Those would be uh, they need to be demolished as part of the grant guidelines. So there's a rendering in the attachments that shows, uh, you know, this is conceptual at this point, but we've got to submit something that shows how we could use the land. So there's you know, some drawings there that, that show some, some ideas, basically. Um, it does include a kayak launch and some additional open space. This uh, Little Wolf Lake is included in the Upper Grand River Water Trail Plan as a, as a potential kayak launch site. The headwaters of... Uh, of the Chain of Lakes Trail with the ultimately connects to the Upper Grand River Water Trail. So that's why it shows a kayak launch. Uh, the grant application would be for, um, well, it's, I think, well, the total project is 235,000 uh, and it would require a 25% match. So the county's portion would be uh, just over 58,000. Uh, the deadline for this project uh, or application is April 1st. We got to do it. So, okay. Any discussion board questions for Kyle? Uh, need a motion and support if we're ready for that. Uh, Commissioner Mahoney. Just a, um, just a quick question um, about where our portion of that investment would be coming from, Kyle. It'd be from Park Mark Millage Dollars. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. We have a motion. Motion by Snell. Do I have a support? Rodney. Okay, all in favor indicate by saying aye or give the sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you, board. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Oh, we got one more here. Uh, the uh, the res uh, MD and our Trust fund grant application for the pickleball courts. Okay, yep, just another uh, another residential support. This is a, a development grant. So this is develop pickleball courts at Sparks Foundation County Park. So the, the Parks Board has been talking about uh, adding pickleball courts since about 2017. Um, it's something that's included in our five-year plan. Include some a brief description of what pickleball is if, if you're not familiar, but it's it's one of the fastest growing sports in America. Basically, uh, there's a huge uh, contingent of passionate uh, players in Jackson County, and there's also a need for for some new courts in Jackson County. There's not a real uh, real good place to play right now, basically. So this would be seeking a resolution to uh, apply for a grant to develop courts. This would replace the existing uh, deteriorating tennis courts that are up the hill from Cascades Ice Cream. Those have not been used since uh, 2008. A lot of people don't even know they're there, basically. Uh, so you can see there was a, an attachment that shows the, the rendering where these would go and uh, nice new courts there with an access route trail up the hill from, from the ice cream there. Uh, same deadline as the Little Wolf Lake, it's, it's April 1st. We would know in December if this grant was awarded. Uh, the total project cost is, is 456,000. We would be applying for the full 300,000. And the match from, from this project would be from the uh, Jack, Jackson Area Pickleball Association. They've actually offered to, to fundraise for this, so they're, they're partners on this. Uh, so that's where the match would come for this project. Do they have the match already, or is it a fundraiser that uh, they'll have to come up with it? They are in, in process of, of raising the funds. Okay. Questions? Discussion? Go ahead, Commissioner Mahoney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just uh, a quick question, and I guess this will apply for the, 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 the other uh, request as well. If, the, if we don't happen to get the grant um, that we're applying for, this will come back before the board, or would a project be abandoned? I think it would likely come back to be reconsidered, but that's it's really the pressure of the board. OK. Any more, Daniel? No, I just wanted to make sure that it's not a project that we'll move forward on if we don't get awarded the, the grant money. Okay, I need a 
motion of support for a resolution of support for the grant to go to the MDNR. Uh, motion by Rodney, support. Support by Commissioner Pulaski. All in favor indicate by saying aye or give the sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you, board. Okay, we'll go to item K. Uh, Administrator controller, our cellular smartphone policy 5220. Good afternoon. Um, this was before the board last month, um, before this committee, and there were some concerns about FOIA notifications to the employees. So we have attached um, a agreement, a proposed agreement that the employees would sign if they were using a personal phone. So hopefully that addresses the concerns that were brought up last month during um, the review of this um, policy. We do not have a red line version. This is kind of a rewrite of the original policy. So there's not a red line version. Um, the old version was attached for the February committee meeting, um, but we do not have a red line version. So, um, but this is a, a bringing back from last month and hopefully it addresses the concerns that were brought forth last month. Thank you, Deborah. Questions board, discussion? Motion and support. Motion by Snell, supported by Walls. All in favor indicate by say, saying aye or giving the sign. They'll go out forward to the full board. <clears throat> we have item L, uh, another policy, policy 3170, exit interview. Yes, um, we're updating this policy and looking to improve communication with our department heads, elected officials and offices within the county. Um, we do currently conduct exit interviews in um, HR, and this is asking HR to share that information and in why employees may or may not be leaving, um, what any concerns are so that we can improve our recruitment efforts. Um, we can look at those things if it's a salary issue and why employees are leaving or those types of things that we can take those into consideration when posting positions and doing recruiting efforts. So this policy is recommended for update for those reasons. I think, I think we lost Phil, but Daniel, did you have a question? Uh, thank you, Deb. Yes, I do. I, I don't know if it's just me or if there's no details included in this, aside from the one since an, an exit interview shall be conducted upon termination of an employee. Is that the only thing that's stated in this policy or is there something that I'm missing? Can't hear you. I'm muted, sorry. It's only one sentence. Yeah, the, the original policy was only one sentence that an exit interview shall be conducted. Um, so all of the blue is new where that review of the results of the exit interviews would be shared with the offices in, in the county. So it was a really brief policy to begin with. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, without Phil, I guess I'll uh, carry on, but I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. I read the agenda, but I can't get bring one up and see where we're at. So that policy, uh, do we have a, uh, uh, a motion to approve it or? I will move to recommend it to the full board, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Pileski. Do we have support? Thank you, Mr. Smell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Motion carried. Okay, if someone could help me with the next agenda item would be. Just Mr. Please. Chairman, your next agenda item is other business. You have the claims on the uh, administrator controller's office 
There are other minutes. You have the reporting schedule for next month and you've arrived at public comment. Is there any public comment? Yes, we have one public comment uh, from a Sandra Hoffman, Hoffman Kingston. Sandra Hoffman, are you there? Good morning. Um, I don't have comments at this time. Um, I have some questions for later, but I'll put those out later. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Are there any other public comment? That brings Negative. Us to, brings yeah. us to commissioner comments. Yeah, you do need a motion to pay the claims. Just one, yeah. I think we need to oh. pay the claims. Yeah, that's what I was oh, gonna thank say. Thank you, Daniel. Do we have a motion to pay the claims? Motion made by Snell, do we have support? Supported by Mr. Com Commissioner Pulaski. All those in favor signify by aye or the sign. Motion carried. So are we at commissioner comments now? Okay, sounds good. Do we have any of those? Hearing none, meetings adjourned. Thank you.